Here's our second definition for the six trigonometric functions. This definition is in terms of a right triangle. So if A is an acute angle in right triangle ABC, where C is equal to 90 degrees, so A is this acute angle in this right triangle here where uh, angle C is the 90 degree angle, then the sine of A is defined to be the length of the side opposite angle A divided by the hypotenuse. So when I look at angle A right here, the side that's opposite angle A is side A. So it's the ratio of side A to the hypotenuse C, A over C. The definition for cosine is the ratio of the length of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So for angle A right here, the side that's adjacent, or the, the leg that's adjacent to angle A, is side B right here. So it's the ratio of B to the hypotenuse. And then the tangent of A is defined to be the ratio of the length of the opposite side to the length of the adjacent side. So the tangent of A is the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, or A over B. And then cosecant, of course, is going to be defined as the reciprocal of sine. So if sine is A over C, cosecant is C over A. Cosine of A is B over C, so its reciprocal secant of A is C over B, and likewise the relationship between tangent and cotangent. So here's a new definition, or the second definition we have for the six trigonometric functions. It's given in terms of a right triangle. This definition does not conflict with definition one. Definition one works when you're working with a coordinate system and you have a point on the terminal side. Definition two works well when you're working with triangles, right triangles in particular. So we need to memorize these definitions right here, sine A opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent opposite over adjacent. Now I could have just as well have defined the trigonometric functions for angle B. I would use the same definitions, that is, the sine of B is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. The cosine of B would be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, and the tangent of B would be the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. So what I want to do next is go to the board and work some problems that involve this new definition for the six trigonometric functions. So here, problem number one, we have triangle ABC is a right triangle with C equal 90 degrees. Find the six trigonometric functions of angle A if side A is 2 and side B is 1. So first, let's just draw a little right triangle here for reference. It doesn't have to be accurate. I'll label this A, this B, and this C. So now I want to find the trigonometric functions of angle A if side A is 2. Well, side A is the side opposite angle A, so I'm going to label that 2, and then side B is 1. Side B is adjacent to angle A and opposite angle B, so that's 1. Now by the Pythagorean theorem, this side right here, C, is going to be the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, plus 2 squared, which is 4, so I get the square root of 5. So I'm going to fill this in with square root 5. Now let's use our, our second definition for the six trigonometric functions here. I'm going to have the sine of angle A will be the side opposite angle A, which is 2, divided by the hypotenuse square root 5. So 2 over square root 5. The cosine of angle A will be the side adjacent to angle A. Here's angle A here, so this side is adjacent, and that side there is opposite. So adjacent to angle A is a side of length 1 divided by the hypotenuse. 1 over square root 5. And then the tangent of angle A is the ratio of the length of the side opposite to the length of the side adjacent. So 2 over 1, which would just be 2. Now I can rationalize these denominators if I want, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'll just leave them in this form right here. Let's find cosecant, secant, and cotangent by using our reciprocal relationships. So first of all, the cosecant of A is the reciprocal of sine, so that's square root 5 over 2. The secant of A will be the reciprocal of cosine, so that's square root 5 over 1, which is just square root 5. And of course, the cotangent of A is the reciprocal of tangent, so that's just 1 half. So now, here, this is just practice at using our second definition here, but the second definition is given in terms of a right triangle. So I draw my little right triangle here and label the two sides that I'm given. I'm looking for trigonometric functions for angle A right here. I know I'm going to need the length of the hypotenuse. I use the Pythagorean theorem to find that. Then the rest is simply applying the definitions the way uh, for the trigonometric functions exactly the way they're defined. So sine of A is the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent side to the hypotenuse, and then tangent is opposite over adjacent. 
cosecant, secant, and cotangent are defined so that they are the reciprocals of these three trigonometric functions over here. So I can just use that reciprocal relationship and not uh, memorize the actual opposite and adjacent and hypotenuse ratios for these right here. Let's look at another example. Problem number two, I have this drawing right here of a right triangle. Um, I've labeled it A, B, and C this way. Here is this side, which is side C. It's 10. This side right here is the opposite angle A, so it's side A. It's 6. I need to first of all find the length of side B right here. So again, I'm going to use my Pythagorean theorem. B will be the square root of 10 squared, which is 100, minus 6 squared, which is 36. That's the square root of 100 minus 36 is 64, so I end up with 8. So side B, I'll label with 8. Now let's find the, uh, the sine of angle A. The sine of angle A, that's right here, is going to be the ratio of the side opposite angle A to the hypotenuse. So that will be 6 over 10, which is going to be 3 fifths. Cosine of angle A. Here's angle A. Here's the side adjacent to angle A, which is 8, divided by the hypotenuse, which is 10. So I have 8 tenths, which comes out to be 4 fifths. Tangent of angle A, the ratio of the side opposite angle A to the side adjacent to angle A, so 6 divided by 8. Or I could simply say sine over cosine, so 3, it's going to end up to be 3 fourths either way. Now I want to keep an eye on these right here and then go over and find sine B, cosine B, and tangent B. Let's work with that other angle for a second. So I'll go over here now to angle B and I want to find the sine of angle B. Well the sine of angle B will be the ratio of the side opposite B, so I want to go opposite. That's this side divided by the hypotenuse, so 8 divided by 10. And that comes out to be 4 fifths. And it's no coincidence that this 4 fifths and this 4 fifths are the same. The cosine of angle A and the sine of angle B are the same thing. Now let's look at the cosine of angle B and see if it comes out to be the same as the sine of A. Cosine of B, okay, here's angle B. The side adjacent is 6. The hypotenuse is 10. 6 divided by 10. That comes out 3 fifths, and sure enough, that's the same as the sine of A. Let's look at the tangent of B. Tangent of B will be the ratio of the side opposite to the side adjacent, 8 sixths, which comes out to be 4 thirds. So the tangent of B and the tangent of A turn out to be reciprocals. So tangent of B is the side opposite divided by the, the, the ratio of the side opposite divided by the side adjacent, so 8 over 6, which comes out to be 4 thirds. Now, this is no coincidence because angle A and angle B in any right triangle are going to be complementary angles. They're going to add up to 90 degrees. And there's a theorem in trigonometry th that says that the trigonometric function of an angle is always equal to the co-function of the complement of that angle. So notice that angle A and angle B add up to 90 degrees. The sine of angle A will be equal to the cosine, that is the co-function, of the complement of angle A, which is B. So sine A and cosine B will always be equal when A and B are complementary angles. Same thing works right here. Cosine of A and the sine of B. These are co-functions, so the, the, the trigonometric function of an angle will be equal to the co-function of the complement of that angle. Now, I've written that, uh, that theorem over here on the board. Let's take a look at it. It's called the co-function theorem. So the co-function theorem, and the way we write it is like this. If A plus B is 90 degrees, that is A and B are complementary angles, then the sine of A is the cosine of B, tangent of A is the cotangent of B, and secant of A is the cosecant of B. In other words, the trigonometric function of an angle is equal to the co-function of its complement. So that's what the co-function theorem says. Let's see if we can put it to use here. It's really pretty simple. I want to find the sine of 10 degrees. Uh, I know that the sine of 10 degrees will always be equal to the cosine of the complement of 10 degrees. Well, what do I add to 10 degrees to get 90? The answer is 80 degrees. The sine of 10 will always be the cosine of its complement, 80 degrees. Tangent of 90 minus x will be the cotangent of, well, the complement of 90 minus x is x. That's the angle I add to 90 minus x to end up with 90 degrees. So sine of 10 is cosine of 80. Tangent of 90 minus x is the cotangent of x. Next thing I want to do is look at exact values for some trigonometric functions of some special angles. My special angles are 0, 30, 45, 60, and 90, and I want to find sine of those, cosine of those, and tangent of those. Now I've written down here some triangles and a coordinate system that are going to help me. I'm going to use both definitions to do this. First of all, let's look at 0 degrees. 
and to find sine, cosine, and tangent of that, I'm going to draw the angle zero degrees in standard position. It'll just, the initial side and terminal side are both along the positive x-axis. I'll find a convenient point on the terminal side. How about x equal 1, y equal 0? The distance out to that point is 1, so I know that the sine of 0 is going to be the y-coordinate divided by r, cosine will be the x-coordinate divided by r, and tangent will be y divided by x. So the sine of 0 degrees, y divided by 1, I'm sorry, 0 divided by 1, which is 0. Cosine of 0 degrees, 1 divided by 1, which is 1. Tangent of 0, 0 divided by 1, which is 0. Now, I can fill in more of this table if I want next using the cofunction theorem because the sine of 0 degrees will be equal to the cosine of 90 degrees because 90 degrees and 0 degrees are complementary angles. So if I want to fill in the, first of all, sine of 90, that will be the same as the cosine of 0. So this must be 1. The cosine of 90 degrees must be the same as the sine of 0 degrees, so this is 0. Now, tangent of 90 degrees, I'll just hold off on that for a second. We'll fill that in a minute. Let's go to 30 degrees now. To find the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30 degrees, I'm going to go to my 30, 60, 90 triangle. You know, if the shortest side is 1, the longest side is 2, and the third side is 1 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 3. Now, the sine of 30 degrees will be the ratio of the side opposite 30 degrees to the hypotenuse. So that's going to be 1 half. Now that should be the same as the cosine of 60 degrees because 60 and 30 are complementary angles. So this must be 1 half right here. Now cosine of 30 degrees, that will be the ratio of the side adjacent to 30 degrees, which is square root 3 divided by the hypotenuse 2. So square root 3 over 2. Now how about my tangent? Well, the tangent of 30 degrees will be the ratio of the side opposite to the side adjacent, so 1 over square root 3, or I could use my identity, tangent theta is sine theta divided by cosine theta. Either way, I get 1 over square root 3. So to find my tangent, I can use the definition, my definition 2 in this triangle right here, or I can use the fact that tangent is sine over cosine. Let's go over here and see if we can fill in the tangent of 90 degrees using that identity. Tangent of 90 degrees will be the sine of 90 divided by the cosine of 90. That will be 1 divided by 0. That's undefined. So there is no tangent of 90 degrees. It's undefined. And when we get to graphing later, you'll actually see uh, what that looks like visually. Okay, so cosine of 30 degrees is square root 3 over 2. That means that the sine of 60 must be square root 3 over 2 because 30 and 60 are complementary angles, so the cosine of 1 must be the sine of the other. Next, next, let's fill in, whoops, let's fill in this right here. Tangent of 60 degrees, sine 60 over cosine 60, square root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. That will just be square root 3. Now I want to fill in the sine, cosine, and tangent for 45 degrees. I've drawn this right triangle. This is 45. That must be 45. If the legs are each one unit long, then the hypotenuse is square root 2. Sine of 45, 1 over square root 2. Cosine of 45, 1 over square root 2. Tangent 45, 1 divided by 1, which is 1. So this is a table of exact values for the trigonometric functions. You should draw this table out uh, and fill it all in yourself using uh, definition 1, definition 2, the cofunction theorem, and the identities. Whatever way you can fill this table in, uh, you want to be able to do it completely just using the information that you've learned so far in trigonometry. Then, after you've filled it in a couple of times, you'll have these exact values memorized, and as you'll see, they'll come up again and again throughout the course. Let's work a couple of problems now that involve using these exact values. For problem 5, we want to simplify the expression 2 cosine 3x minus 45 degrees if x is equal to 30 degrees. So let's substitute in x equal 30 into this expression right here, and we'll have 2 cosine of 3 times 30 degrees minus 45 degrees. So that's equal to 2 cosine of 3 times 30. Well, let's see, 3 times 3 is 9, so that's 90 degrees. Subtract 45 degrees, which will be 45 degrees. That's 2 times the exact value for cosine 45, 1 over square root 2. So I get 2 over square root 2. If I want to, I could rationalize this denominator. Let's just do that once. I'll multiply by square root 2 over square root 2. 
On top, I get 2, square root 2. On the bottom, I get 2. Those 2's divide out, so this actually has a little simpler form to square root 2. That's 2 times the cosine of 3 times 30 minus 45. So that's 90 minus 45, which is 45. Cosine of 45, I got these exact values memorized, 1 over square root 2, and I rationalize the denominator, I get square root 2. Here's another problem. Let's find the exact value of the cosecant of 60 degrees. I'm going to start by using my, one of my reciprocal identities. This is 1 over the sine of 60 degrees. So that's 1 over, okay, I've got this memorized now. Sine of 60 degrees is going to be square root 3 over 2. 1 over square root 3 over 2, that's the reciprocal of square root 3 over 2, which is 2 over the square root of 3. So the cosecant of 60, that's not one that I'm going to have memorized. I'm not going to memorize exact values for these other three trigonometric functions, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. What I'll do is use my, my identities to find them in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 60, 45, whatever my special angles are. So cosecant 60, 1 over the sine of 60. The sine of 60 square root 3 over 2, I've got that memorized, 2 over the square root of 3. So that's uh, some practice at using the second definition for the six trigonometric functions.